you okay. have a worm. Go for it. So uh, we, uh, I'm supposed to give a signal that we're uh, start to start recording this or start live streaming this. So let's go ahead and do that, and and uh, I will call the meeting to order. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, how do we do that? Someone uh, like to volunteer to uh, lead us in the Pledge yep. of Allegiance. All right, you've got a flag. That's very you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I pledge allegiance All right. to the flag. So if everyone wants to stand where they are, then we can do the pledge. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the republic, republic which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, or God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. All we've right, doing, we've been doing Roll this call. enough. We got it pretty down, down pretty good now. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. This is my first uh, meeting. Like, I mean, it's not my first Zoom meeting. Believe me, I've been living on Zoom, but. Uh, my first official meeting, so uh, so this is all new to me. Uh, roll call. Rosanna, go ahead and do roll since Justin's not joining. Okay. So present we have Commissioner Montemayor. Commissioner Davis, Chail, Chair Current, Commissioner, um, I can't get um, Sharma, Rohit, um, Vice Chair Kaidoi, I think that's it so far. Okay. Uh, great. Are we going to need to seat any alternates? No, you don't need to. Okay, great. So the first item is to approve the agenda for the, the June 1st, 2020 meeting. Um, do we have a copy of that we can look at? Up on the... Can you all see it? I can see part of it. Yeah, I see it. Okay. And then Molly, when you when you do a vote now, just as an FYI, you have to do a roll call. We can't do a standard, all those in favor, just because we're all on video. So you'll just have to run down the list of those um, attending commissioners. Okay. Just when um, you're ready. Okay, so just want to give everybody a chance to review this. Um, okay. All right, has everybody had a chance to review this? Uh, looking for a motion. Uh, again, only people can vote who attended this meeting. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes or to some other comment. If the if some correct, there's a correction that needs to be made. Molly, I think you're doing the agenda first and then you'll do minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. That's okay. Yes, it cur yes. so uh, same thing though. I do need a motion to <laughs> approve the agenda. <laughs> I, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay, that's Ricky, do we have? Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, all those who attended who uh, are in favor of, no, I guess everyone votes on this. Uh, all those in favor uh, of approving the agenda, um, I guess we go one at a time. And so I'll start by, vo by voting yes. Then just go down the list, Molly. You're gonna have to call their names out. Okay. Um, uh, I don't have a list. Uh, 
Commissioner Montane on Monta Yes Mayor Monta Mayor. I'm for yes. A vice chair. Um yes. yes. Uh Ricky Commissioner yes. I can't remember Ricky's last name, is Ricky. Okay, um and Rohit. Then, who, who am I missing? Rohit. Rohit? I, yeah, I wasn't there in the March meeting. No, no, this is this is the agenda, you guys. Everyone I votes see. on the agenda. Yep. Yes. Uh, I confuse things. Okay. Okay. So uh unanimous. Yes, approval. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, move on to what I thought I was doing, uh, which is approval of the meeting minutes from March second, uh, twenty twenty. And do we have that to look at? Yes. Okay. Okay, get a chance to look at that. I was there, I moved to have it approved. Okay, if everyone's had a chance to look at this, uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, again, only those can vote who attended the meeting. So you have a motion, Molly. Val uh, Commissioner Voltaire made a motion. So you need okay, a second. So now now I need a second. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Crystal. 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 Okay. Thanks, Crystal. Yeah. Um, so uh, now let's vote. Uh, I was there, so I vote to approve. Uh, Vice Chair Kadoy? Yeah. Okay. Ricky, you were not there. Commissioner Roheep, were you there? No, I wasn't. Okay. Um, commission, uh, Commissioner Montemoyer, Mayor? My vote is Montemoyer. yes. Yes, okay. So uh, that's three yeses of uh, all the people that were in attendance. And then the other two will mark as abstained since they were not present. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, now, we are going uh, to move to the public forum, and I believe that the, the comments need to be submitted by uh, by the web. Is that how that's working? Um, so do we have any public comments, uh, any public participation? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Uh, announcements. Um, staff could make a lot of announcements about everything going on, but we'll keep it to PRCRC. I hope everyone is home and healthy along with their families. Um, the city is, has been busy and dedicated to um, protecting its residents through a number of different ways. Um, some of those you're going to hear tonight uh, regarding recreation from our assistant director, Tegan McLean. So I'll just kind of leave it to that. Um, we could jump into business if you're ready, Chair. Uh, let's do it. Uh, item number one is uh, Bobby Sox Fields. Bobby Sox Fields. Uh, and the, the city staff is reporting on that. Yep. All right. Rosanna will be presenting. Next slide, please. So the youth sports program overview. Milpitas is home to many youth sport organizations that serve residents through sports like football, baseball, rugby, softball, and soccer. Youth sports fields are located all over the city and serve thousands of children annually. Next slides, please. Bobby Sox Fields, history and current use. In 1996, the City of Milpitas and Milpitas Unified School District entered into a joint use agreement for development and oversight of the Bobby Sox Fields at Thomas Russell Middle School. The project included three sports fields, a snack shack with restrooms. 
the city per the joint use agreement was responsible for the management of the fields and snack shack including allocation of field use during non-school days maintaining turf and prepping fields for non-district practices and games the russell fields are currently used by the milpitas north valley pal softball formerly the north valley milpitas bobby Sox. next slide please again um, continuing with the history and current use the milpitas utilizes softball fields located at cardoza park gill park and thomas russell middle school which is the school district property the recent bond measure includes renovation of existing sports fields at Russell Middle School to a full-size running track, softball field for players under eight years of age, and a multi-use or multi-sport practice field. Next slide, please. So um, the youth sport organizations, we do have a field allocation process. This process is held twice a year, November for uh, leagues held February through August and May for leagues held July to December. The field allocation process is based on three priorities. Tier one, all groups administered or sponsored by the City of Milpitas Recreation Services. Tier two, youth and sanctioned organizations and or groups comprised of 51% Milpitas residents and Tier three, youth organizations and or groups comprised of less than 51% of Milpitas residents. Next slide, please. The city gives field allocation priority to the sport in season. The city allocates these fields according to age groups appropriate for field use as well as other activities on surrounding amenities. The percentage of Milpitas residents will be determined by the average of the previous three years season rosters. Next slide, please. Youth sport organizations. This is, gives you an idea what the season schedule looks like. These are predetermined seasons are established to maximize the allocation of fields and shared use by multiple sports. In the fall, which is August through November, uh, fields, um, I'm sorry, sport in season would be football and soccer. During the spring season, which is February through July, sport in season is softball and little league baseball during the summer season which is mid-june to about august it's junior giants baseball next slide please so for the bobby bobby Sox fields the sports field rehab the city's planned renovation of sports fields includes changing the Dixon Landing fields into a multi-use field that will be able to host both softball and baseball. These updated fields will continue to accommodate the current Junior Giants baseball and Milpitas National Little League use, as well as adding the Milpitas North Bobby Sox. Next slide, please. This is how we're going to go about notifying the community we do recognize the already dynamic uses of dixon landing park staff is planning on various ways to use social media and the homeowner associations to keep the neighborhood informed of the seasons of play appropriate use of the park parking lot and many benefits of outdoor drop-in recreation on a person's well-being next slide please and so for the Bobby Sox fields, the recommendation would be to receive um, the project update and provide your comments and recommendations this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Rosanna. So if I could just um, add to that just a little bit. So that gives you an overview, somewhat of our youth sport organization groups, but mainly the change of use at the Russell Bobby Sox fields, which um, the, the joint use agreement is ending. Um, and they have over the last, I don't know, Rosanna, maybe four or five years, they've seen an increase in their after school sports where there really weren't any when the uh, joint use agreement was developed. 
And so the availability of the fields to our uh, youth softball players has become um, less and less over the years um, and just challenging because there's um, competing um, times and, and groups for the space out there. So the district did let us know um, after the bond was approved that they were going to be moving forward with um, changing the amenities at the site. So staff has looked at what amenities the city has on its own property, such as Cardoza Park and Gill Park with the softball fields that exist, which actually have lights. And then the Dixon Landing Park that has other baseball fields that we could make multi-use, which is a trend that many cities are moving towards when it comes to sport fields. Um, you'll often see soccer being played in outfields. So um, we're just sort of looking at creative ways to make sure that an existing sport has a place to play um, and they will, and uh, we'll continue to serve that group and assign field usage um, and some of the snack, snack shack usage with our already existing uh, field allocation uh, process. So Rosanna are here to answer any questions. We also have hidden in a square somewhere, our public works department director, Tony Enda. Um, his group manages the uh, CIP program that is doing uh, in general uh, sport field rehab around the city uh, over the next year or two. Um, so he's here uh, and available as well and can speak to any questions you guys might have about maintenance or um, et cetera. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Chair. Um, I have a question, which is essentially, how is this going to change things from how they are right now in terms of the usage and the availability? Um, so the Bobby Sox fields at Russell Middle School will go down from, was there three there right now, Rosanna? That is correct. Um, yeah, three fields to one U8 when they're done with construction. And so mm -hmm. what will end up happening is the use of the fields that they, uh, Bobby Sox would have um, had its bustle, that will be shifted over to um, the Dixon Landing fields, as well as Cardoza Park and uh, Gill Park fields. I mean, is there, is there room for that? Is this gonna result in less opportunities for um, softball players? I think it actually opens up more fields uh, when mm. we distribute the use around the city. Uh, a lot of sports do the same thing. Soccer is one of them. There are multiple locations around the city. Uh, same thing with our baseball. Sometimes they're at the Little League fields at the sports center. Sometimes they're at Dixon Landing. Um, so it just spreads them out a little bit more than maybe they are mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's about 150 girls, I think, enrolled currently in the season um, at, due to COVID, you know, the seasons are pretty much over for the rest of the year, but um, there was about a hundred and unfortunately, about 150 girls um, who were looking forward to playing this year that, you know, may or may not happen until next year. Um, okay. So they have, I, they have the same amount of fields to play on. Mm -hmm. um, they will get um, fields with lights, which is actually something that does not exist at uh, Russell Middle School, both Cardoza and Gill Park are lit. Um, and they'll also have access to uh, Snack Shack for fundraising uh, when they are at the Dixon Landing Field. Uh, one last question. Do you have any, are you expecting any pushback from this? Uh, is, the, is the organization happy with this change? How? Um, We've met with the PAL board, which includes the Bobby Sox, um, and spoken with some of their main leadership as well, just about the changes. Um, I think change is scary for everybody. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say there was pushback. I think they just want to make sure that the girls have somewhere to play. Um, yeah. And I understand that. And we will, we will provide that to them. Um, and then just the sharing of the fields um, during the spring season will be new for um, the groups, but we manage it 100% uh, of the year with the other sports. 
So that's the onus of the city staff when they're doing the field allocations to make sure that they're not overbooking the fields and they're being very Hi. sensitive Excuse. to the. Um, I'm your intelligent assistant. Oh, I need an intelligent assistant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could personally use one as well. Yeah, if anyone I don't know has what an that extra is. Intelligent assistant. I want some I, of that. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I digress. So the. Um, <laughs> they'll have access to the fields. Um, it'll take an exercise of, of staff looking at how to best organize, you know, spring. And um, I think we can achieve that. I think we can work together and messaging out to the community around Dixon Landing Park because it is a very popular park. Uh, okay. I think we'll be able to achieve, you know, some, some, uh, some better kumbaya out there and i think it's just messaging and information about when games are going to happen and you know trying to make everyone as happy as possible that, my main concern is just to be sure there's not a reduction in opportunity for those girls to play and it sounds like you've got that covered yeah there's um, uh, space. yeah uh other questions do other people have questions no i don't have any uh, Tony, I know you joined. Is there any kind of messaging you want to send to the group just about the maintenance and the public works perspective? Oh, no, Anything? nothing, nothing bigger to add there. I just just enjoying the conversation with everyone here, and um, um, I think the main thing would just be that the maintenance that we would provide would be um, in par with what we're already providing at the other sports fields that we have. So, great. And I live right across the street from Cardozo Park, and you guys do a nice job. Thank you. I'll definitely pass that on to the team. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I guess what we want to do me, uh, is, uh, oh, do we have other questions or other comments? Virtual hand, Voltaire, Montemayor, mm -hmm. here. Yeah, um, for me, any expansion, like at least we have uh, places to... Um, do the other function while we are uh, doing uh, the field behind, is that behind a city college, right? In Russell, that place, I think uh, it's, it's a good place. It's a, yeah, it's, it's good to plan a wider one or a better one that will uh, be uh, for a year or so, then uh, it's okay. I think uh, we could wait. So for me, uh, the improvement from uh, from a smaller to a better one, bigger one, then for me, I, I'm okay. Thank you. So just to be clear, uh, Voltaire, the yeah. improvements that they're making at Russell Field, they're putting in a track and a field in the middle, similar to what's at the high school. And then they're maintaining one uh, softball field for the younger girls. It's the U under eight, the U eight. So it'll be a different type of use. The district um, feels strongly and they feel have support from the community to um, uh, expand their track and field and their soccer programs after school at the middle school and also allow more time for high school to come over and use those fields. So uh, we're gonna work with the district on any potential use for that middle field area uh, continued use of uh, the U8 field, and then we'll be um, allocating fields to the Bobby Sox around Milpitas uh, on the city-owned fields. Just want to make sure that you understand that. Yeah, and it connects to most of the park, like uh, Sandalwood, uh, all those parks down. Uh, yeah, the, out, the outer part of Milpitas, kind of outer, are connected. So in other words, that's a good spot. Um, like we're up, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have a question that's a, a little bit um, uh, uh, off topic, but not really. Um, <laughs> up by uh, William Burnett Elementary School, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a, there's a big open field that's really not developed or used for anything. And I wonder whether there are any plans to make that area... Uh, more productive. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, well, there's a large field space behind the school. Is that what you're yes. talking about? Yeah. Yes. That's 
district property that's typically filled with children during recess. <laughs> um, and I do <laughs> know that the soccer group sometimes utilize that field through rentals. It's, I mean, it's, it's a mess, really. I'm surprised um, anybody can play soccer on it. Yeah. I mean, it's not developed. It's just like a field. It's not yeah. It's yeah. not really maintained or kept in any way. It's full of ticks and this mm. kind of stuff. I kind of walk my yeah. dog through that area. But. Oh, okay. So anyway, it yeah. just seems like there's a potential for uh, some field space there, if particularly soccer. Uh, yeah. That's district property, so I can't yeah, we don't. Um, do anything about that, and I don't okay. know anybody either, but we could always okay. pass on the information about the ticks to the... To the well, no. Okay, it's okay. I didn't know who owned it. It just seems to me like it's underutilized space, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, so good comment. I get, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, um, I guess now we want to receive the project uh, update. Uh, do we need to move on that, or uh, do are we done? No, I think I just... Um, would confirm that I what I've heard from the commission so far is just uh, you know your main concern if you want to use that word would be that um, the the Bobby Sox sport still has room and fields to play in Milpitas mm -hmm. um, and that with the locations we've provided you feel that they do and so if we get any questions from council later we're able to communicate that to them yeah. so I think that's all we need Okay, the next item is the recreation quarterly report, the virtual community center. Uh, and uh, this is city staff report. Yep, so our assistant director, Tegan McLean, will be walking you. Are you going to share your screen, Tegan? I am going to share my right. screen. Yeah. So she's going to walk you through a very cool thing we did. And by we, I mean <laughs> Tegan. Um, <laughs> in response. <laughs> yeah, we're all in. <laughs> Everyone participated, but she has been instrumental in keeping it organized. Um, a virtual community center that we created uh, when people went into place. So with that taken, go ahead and take it away. Sure. Okay, I'm attempting to share my screen here. Let's see here. I don't want to see us. I want to see the screen. Um, okay. So um, we started a virtual community center, like many of the cities in the area did, to connect with our customers um, during this time that they can't come in and participate at our facilities. And we're trying to give people opportunities to enjoy recreation at home. Um, so here we are on the main page of the virtual community center, and you can get to this from the front page of the city's website or from searching um, in the search bar on the city website, or just simply typing the city's address and typing VCC afterwards um, for virtual community center. So what we have here up at the top of the page is um, banners that allow us to promote what's going on right now. So if we have a special event, um, we had a virtual Memorial Day um, ceremony last week. Um, we have a banner up at the top um, that um, can be replaced with other things. Um, as you scroll down, um, we're reminding everybody the reason we have this um, to keep you physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy during this shelter in place period. Um, although it's created for shelter in place, I would imagine we'll just keep it up afterwards um, because it's a great opportunity for people to participate if they can't get to our facilities and can't participate. Um, in person. Um, we're also encouraging people to participate with us on social media. We have a very active Facebook account, Instagram, and um, now YouTube. And um, one of the really cool things about the Virtual Community Center is we are inviting people to share their ideas with us. Um, so we keep the activities on the Community Center um, fresh. We try to update every week and try to have at least one new item on each page. I'm gonna go through some of the pages and share with you. Um, this first one is our events and online classes. And um, right now, um, we've, as I said, just finished up with a virtual Memorial Day. We'll be doing um, a few um, online and um, uh, sort of uh, activities to honor the class of 2020. So you can look for that coming this week. Um, we'll have all that up by the end of the week, which would be their graduation. 
Um, we'll also be cooperating with um, Global Pride 2020 at the end of the month because we can't have our Milpitas Pride event in person this year. And we'll be doing some special things for 4th of July. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see our virtual Memorial Day ceremony, um, that one was run like a ceremony. Um, it linked to YouTube and I'm going to zip over there real quick. Um, so we had all the activities that you would normally have um, seen had you come to um, a, an in-person Memorial Day ceremony. And um, we had some songs, we had some um, uh, speeches, um, and then of course we went through the names of the fallen. And um, one of the really cool things about this, um, you can you could play the playlist and run through it in order, or you could highlight you know whatever you wanted to see if you particularly wanted to, um, for example, um, listen to Liliana um, Ramos uh, read Denny's speech that we've heard for so many um, past Memorial Days. It's very moving. Um, you could zip right to that. Um, we've had 538 views on the Memorial Day playlist. Um, and um, if you go through each individual item that we have. So um, that's been, you know, neat because in person we wouldn't certainly um, get that many views. Um, so that that's kind of what's on the events page. We've also got some sampler classes from instructors and we're hoping to um, have some uh, more in-depth fee-based classes as we go a little bit further into this. Um, let me go back to the virtual community center here for a sec. Um, so indoor activities, obviously we're spending a lot of time indoors and um, this is uh, a, an area where we have activities for the whole family. We like to um, share the um, cool uh, websites that we've found. And um, we've got uh, some videos from some of our teachers, our ATB teachers. Um, we've got some cool site, uh, sites that we've found. We partner with other organizations. So we have um, things from the library. We have some ideas from Valley Water, um, different things uh, for people to do. Um, the new one last week happened to be this visit a virtual Disney World um, and ride the rides via YouTube video. So if you are a rides uh, fanatic. That's kind of fun to go and uh, get to ride all the rides at Disney for free. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, let me go back and we'll go to um, outdoor activities. Um, again, we're partnering with local agencies. So um, when the screen loads, you'll see that we've got um, ideas for you know things that you can do in your garden, um, creating a butterfly garden. Um, with some help from uh, the Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency. Um, we partner a lot with our um, public works um, folks in the environmental area um, to get some ideas for this. Um, we've got things that you can do if you were taking a walk in your park and identifying trees or um, identifying birds. Um, we've got some outdoor games you can play. Um, a cool one that's uh, new this um, most recent week is over in our arts and crafts area. Um, and if you're a follower, as you would have seen it today, um, we have a, um, let's see, I'm trying to get it to load here. Um, we've uh, last week posted an idea for Milpitas rocks, basically the painted rocks that, um, uh, kids and families so much enjoy and hidden them in the parks and um, uh, people can um, go out and take a look for them. Um, Tony will be glad to know that we're making sure we've we've made a note that they shouldn't put them where the mowers are uh, going but um, uh, we had some rocks found this weekend so those were posted. Um, lots of other activities, you, uh, instructions on how to sew a mask if you wanted to do that. Um, cool places you can visit, uh, new museums to go see. Um, as we go back to our pages here, um, music and dance, uh, links to different performances. We'd love to see some performances by some of our local performers. Um, haven't um, actually added um, any in that area yet, but we're working on that. Um, but, uh, we have um, concerts that you can listen to. We've got a great online karaoke resource for people who like to sing. Um, some cool uh, 
concerts um, from ranging from opera to pop music. Um, let's see here, going back. Mental health and stress relief, that's obviously a big one right now. That's one of our most trafficked pages um, and we are happy to provide people with both um, uh, activities that they can do to relieve stress, um, uh, including um, uh, a great journal writing source. Um, one that was suggested last week was this sound drown um, background music. Um, and I thought it was funny, it was uh, included um, sounds of a coffee shop. So if you're feeling isolated at home and you, you know, miss going to Starbucks, you can actually listen to Starbucks and relax by listening to Starbucks. Um, but we've also got some more serious things on this page, um, links to Santa Clara County Behavioral Health Services and all the great resources that they provide, um, some tips on living alone during the coronavirus um, outbreak. Um, so um, that we're, we're touching on also our, not just our recreation activities, but our very important social services um, role that we do. Um, we've got shelter in place workouts and we move these tiles around every week. So um, uh, depending on what you're interested in, um, you'll see different stuff on different weeks. Um, so the shelter in place workouts, come on, load, load, load. Um, I was happy last week that we were able to add um, a workout from one of our senior center um, instructors, um, Fernanda Dalden um, teaches the spring chickens um, class at the senior center and um, shared uh, a couple of um, classes with us um, that we could put on virtually. And um, so that was a nice addition last week. Um, I, I will kind of skip, I think, and not go through all of them here. Um, Community Resources has um, uh, some, again, some of the more um, social services social service-y type things, um, food resources, um, uh, the mask making, um, where you can volunteer if you're feeling inspired to volunteer. And we've got some um, great opportunities um, with our uh, partnership with um, Second Harvest Food Bank, that kind of thing. Um, we try to also um, put activities by age group. Um, so the teens, um, one that we added last week was um, a great video. Um, they have a program at the Teen Center, um, CC's Sweet Treats, and one of our staff members, um, Jennifer, um, uh, is a chef, and she uh, teaches the teens great recipes um, that are easy, that can be made for one person, and um, the recipe last week was whipped coffee, so if you need to pick me up, that's a good one. And um, that's kind of the overview of, of what we've got. I would encourage you to hop on um, regularly and see what's new. And if you have something that you're enjoying doing at home and you'd like to share with us so that we can share it with the public, that would be great to hear from you. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I'm gonna turn off the community center and go back to um, seeing you in person. Well, that's super cool. It is cool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I had no idea that even existed. I, I'm going to definitely uh, actually yeah, go check it out. Several, of fun I saw several things that interest me that I'm going to check out. Good. Well, uh, wow. I can't believe you put all that together. Just in this uh, time period, you've put all that together. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as Renee said, I mean, our whole staff works on it. So everybody, as they come across something interesting, they share it and we um, in turn share it with their public. Well, that's great. So uh, does anybody else have any feedback or comment? I, I think this is terrific and appreciate all the work you've done on this. Thank you. Yeah, it's really nice. I didn't even know it existed. To be, uh, not to be late yet, right? It's not late to, uh, to join, like uh, to no cost to join. It's free. It's up all the time. So we hope that you'll um, visit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I'll just I'll just seek for the link. I'll find it. Uh, you know, I can I can have Rosanna send you the link. Um, maybe after the meeting. Okay, please. Yeah. yeah. There, Montim. I I could give you my uh, email address, or I think you, you have. That's it. okay. She has them. She can send it to all of you. I think. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you.
And then once you get it, share it on on your social media pages or with your friends, uh, family. We don't care if they're from Milpitas or not. We just want people to stay active and healthy and, and get the resources we, they need, especially with the, the mental health um, services. It's real difficult for a lot of people. So share it, share it often. We don't care who to. We just, we just want those resources out to, to people right now. Thanks for the offer. Thank you. Yeah. And if you wake up at three in the morning and you're like, my God, why don't we have, you know, virtual <laughs> uh, toilet paper, <laughs> TP parties, whatever, you know, just shoot us an email and, you know, we'll see if we can put it up there, you know. Okay. All right. Ideas. Great. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think we've received the presentation. Uh, let's move on to city liaison reports and uh, starting with a report from the city staff. Um, well, you've seen kind of what we've been up to. Um, when there's an emergency like this, the staff um, shifts modes. We are care and shelter for the city of Milpitas. Staff has been working diligently on food distribution. Uh, we organized the um, drive through food distribution site that debuted a couple weeks ago. Ricky was there volunteering at the high school. We served uh, 600 households in two hours um, giving wow. them food. And we had to, we ended up turning a few people, a few households away. Uh, the next distribution is this Saturday, um, June 6th. And we're upping it to 700 households um, and actually, 80% of those people were actually Milpitas residents, and that was huge. Um, a, a nice chunk of people uh, from our own community being served in Milpitas, so we're super proud of that. We've helped the school district serve meals. We've helped get mobile testing and fixed COVID testing sites up. Um, staff has been making plans on just how to offer programs this summer whenever we're able to offer programs this summer. Uh, we're feeding seniors, keeping up case management, phone appointments. So um, it's odd because we're not in the office, but, you know, we're all still here working for, for Milpitas, as are all of the departments. Everyone is working and giving 110%. Um, so if you guys need anything, reach out. We're always here. Um, and we look forward to getting back to, to some sense of safe normal activity with our with our residents so i think i think that'll be it for our report for tonight okay i'm impressed with the long lines how you rewrote it for long lines yeah to go to the to the to the place yeah that's right you were our parking lot singer that day too Walter. i remember you were there so <laughs> yeah yeah it was a, it was a smooth operation yes yes i saw it yeah uh, so uh, the agenda says we have a report from a council member. No. Council member Fan is not with us tonight, so you can go ahead and move on to the next item. Great, which is uh, upcom upcoming agenda items, uh, work plan subcommittee updates. Well, <clears throat> I can tell you that the history committee hasn't done anything. We had a meeting all set up uh to plan our work right when the um shelter in place came down yeah and uh so i don't know whether any other subcommittees have something to report or not it's been difficult because the type of stuff that at least our committee needs to do involves sort of getting out and looking at places i have a group asking favor uh the sunny hills neighborhood association they're doing the history of uh, i think mainly uh Sunny, Sunny Hills area. So I think uh, they are asking favor if we could provide them or we collaborate with each other, I think. Who uh, is who's do, who is they who's Sunny, doing this? The Sunny Hills Neighborhood Association. They, they, about the history of mainly the, the Sunny Hills, yeah. If I and remember. What do yeah. they want from the commission, Walter? Oh, you got me, they're gonna, <laughs> um, you got me. Allison uh, will call. Uh, okay. Okay. Have her reach out. Okay. Thank okay. You. 
That's great. Any other subcommittees have uh, reports to make? I think everything kind of stops, uh, yes. Chair. So I think, um, you know, we're- I know that happened with my committee, so. Yeah, I mean, I can't even believe, honestly, that it's June 1st today. So <laughs> we're almost at the end of the fiscal year, which means your work plan is almost done. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we gear up for uh, at the next meeting, which will be August. Everyone takes July off. Um, and we work on reestablishing the work plan and then mm -hmm. we'll come up with a plan to work on subcommittees virtually. I think this is just gonna kind of be our new norm for the rest of the calendar year. So there's a lot. I was gonna be my, I was gonna ask you that question. Uh, what what yeah. What's the future look like in terms of? I mean, I could uh, guess, but what would be the point? <laughs> so, yeah. well, I mean, I, it, you yeah, know, like you were saying, knows? working remotely from the end yeah. to the end of the yeah. year is one piece of information that's helpful to know. Yeah, I think we, you know, we kind of move forward assuming that we'll be doing a lot of things virtually. And then mm -hmm. whenever we get the word that uh, people can start to gather a little bit more with um, others that they're not sheltering in place in, we can, we can expand efforts. But um I think we could start that at your August meeting. And um, I think we can still achieve a lot virtually. Um, I know we have just working together, just the department. So I think this commission is intelligent and capable and we'll just shift those resources to you guys as well. Okay. That sounds great. Well, I think that's it. Uh, unless there's something that we've overlooked. Otherwise I think we can adjourn. All right. See everybody and see everybody in August. All yeah. right. Thank you so Have much, nice everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye Renee. Stay Bye. safe. Thanks Thank for you. all the work you've done. Thanks Bye. for all your work.